Hello, my name is Nabila Patel. Welcome to my presentation on three molecules that change the course of history. As a student in the Gulf Coast Honors Program, I read a book called Napoleon's Buttons, 17 Molecules That Changed History, and I chose three molecules to share with you all today. The first molecule I chose is vitamin C. Vitamin C is a crucial molecule for our survival. It is necessary in the production of collagen, which is the protein that binds and supports the tissues in our bodies. A lack of vitamin C is linked to a plethora of diseases, such as scurvy, Crohn's disease, Parkinson's, depression, etc. The word vitamin comes from two words, <clears throat> vital and amine. While of course, vitamin C is vital for our survival, However, an amine is a nitrogen-containing organic compound, which vitamin C is not actually contained in nitrogen, so it is not an amine. And the name vitamin C is actually a misnomer. Right here, we can see that vitamin C does not contain any nitrogen, so it's not an amine, and vitamin C is a misnomer. Most mammals can use glucose to synthesize vitamin C in their livers. For example, a cat does not have to consume any vitamin C because it can use the enzyme gluconolactone oxidase to synthesize vitamin C. Um, but of course, it wouldn't harm the cat to consume vitamin C, it would just be unnecessary. Humans were once also able to synthesize vitamin C in the same way. However, over the course of evolution, humans have lost the genes that encode for gluconolactone oxidase, and as a result, we can no longer synthesize vitamin C. So it is for this reason that we must supplement ourselves with vitamin C through our diets. The importance of vitamin C has been known for a very long time. However, this knowledge was unfortunately once disregarded. During the 14th and 15th centuries, sailors would take longer and longer voyages at sea as a result of advancements in their ships. And in these long journeys, they would take butter, cheese, vinegar, dried peas, beer, and rum, and other similar foods. However, vitamin C is found in fresh fruits and vegetables, and we can tell that that was not included in their diet. So as a result of their vitamin C deficient diets, the sailors would slowly but surely develop symptoms such as exhaustion and weakness, excessive bruising, and muscle pain, and loss of teeth, and much more. And these were the symptoms of scurvy, a disease that results from the lack of vitamin C in one's diet. As a result of their poor diets, over 90% of Ferdinand Magellan's crew did not survive his circumnavigation of the world. Today, we all regularly consume vitamin C, and we can travel all over the world without worrying about the consequences that once were faced by people when they traveled long distance before. Now, we don't have to worry about our teeth falling out and likely uh, facing death as a result because we know that we should have vitamin C. The next molecule I chose is cellulose. There are two, there are a few types of glucose and one of them is alpha glucose and another is beta glucose. Alpha glucose makes up starch that we consume and then metabolize to break down into glucose that contributes to our blood sugar levels and may contribute to diabetes and weight gain. Beta glucose, on the other hand, is cellulose and it cannot be broken down by humans and therefore it makes up the dietary fiber in our foods and it plays the role of keeping us full and satisfied after we eat. So it may actually promote weight loss. Now there's a very small difference between the structures of alpha glucose and beta glucose that explains why we cannot break down beta glucose in the way that we can break down alpha glucose. And all it is is the positioning of this hydroxide group right here. Because beta glucose's hydroxide group is positioned upward like this, we as humans, along with other mammals, do not have the enzyme necessary to metabolize it after consumption. Cellulose constitutes over 90% of cotton. As we know throughout history, Cotton has industrialized many parts of the world, including the United States, and it has greatly contributed to the prosperity of the United States today. 
um, it has also led to some of the social dilemmas that we see still today. Cellulose is unexpectedly explosive. One day, a German Swiss chemist was experimenting in his kitchen um, on the mixtures of nitric and sulfuric acids, and he ended up spilling some of the acid. So Friedrich Schoenbein rushed, rushed over to his wife's cotton apron and wiped up the acid. And then he hung it over the stove to let it dry. And then just a moment later, the apron exploded with a loud bang and a big flash. What happened to that apron that day was that the cellulose in the apron came into contact with the nitric acid, which caused it to dissolve and explode. Scanby named this material gun cotton, and he hoped to make a profit out of manufacturing it. However, the nitrocellulose in the gun cotton proved to be extremely reactive and explosive, that it destroyed many of the gun cotton manufacturing factories. So Scanby did not end up profiting off of his discovery. As well as bringing about explosions within the firepower industry, cellulose has also brought about explosions within the entertainment industry. Once the techniques of nitrating cellulose were more and more controlled, collodion and celluloid were formed and they were used in photography and film. As we can see right here, this is celluloid film and it was commonly used in the production of movies. And it's actually because this film used to contain some nitrocellulose, which is why we would see it catching on fire and it's due to the high flammability of nitrocellulose. Now the rise of movies within the entertainment industry brought about a form of entertainment that everyone could empathize with. And it was the first time that people could witness the news rather than just reading it in the newspaper. People could watch the progression of wars and the deaths of the renowned, and they could watch things in live action like never before. So as we can see, in more ways than one, cellulose has had a huge impact on the world as we know it today. The third molecule I chose is piperine, which is the active ingredient in black pepper. Black pepper originated in India and was initially introduced to Europe by Arab traders. Pepper was used as an antidote to poison by the Greeks and as a flavorful spice by the Romans. And so pepper made foods enjoyable and flavorful and also slowed the rate of decay. Now, the reason that we feel that spicy sensation when we have pepper is actually due to the shape of piperine. So piperine fits onto the proteins of the pain nerve endings in the mouth and it causes the proteins to change shape. And this elicits a response that sends pain signals to the brain causing that flaming hot sensation that we get when we eat pepper. And although it may seem counterintuitive, but the reason we feel satisfied after eating a spicy meal is due to that pain response within the brain. Our brains produce endorphins as a, result, as a response to pain. And these endorphins can then give us a sense of satisfaction and pleasure. So this explains why we feel so satisfied after having a spicy meal. Pepper was used a lot in the preservation of foods such as meat, and although today we may take it for granted, but in the times before refrigerators, preservatives saved lives, and pepper's ability to preserve food and prevent its decay ultimately allowed for populations to grow and thrive. Nowadays, we take the bottle of black pepper on our dining table for granted. But we should remember that pepper was once such a novelty that battles were fought and blood was shed as people struggled to attain the precious spice. As we can see, vitamin C, cellulose, and pepper have each had a huge impact in the world around us today. These three molecules have played big roles in the colonialization and globalization of the world. Knowledge of vitamin C and its importance saves lives and allows us to travel long distance, even in ships, for a long period of time without getting severely sick. This has allowed for great discoveries of new lands and people, 
and likely facilitated the meshing of different cultures and people. Cellulose has also played a huge role in many areas of our lives. It actually makes up our diets, our clothes, and even once our firepower and entertainment. In pepper, acting as a preservative has allowed for the world population to grow, and as people were no longer frequently dying from dangerous bacteria and food poisoning, and pepper has led people to settle on new lands that otherwise would not have ultimately been settled on, and it has also set the boundaries and borders of nations as we know them to be today. Now, these three molecules are not the only molecules that have had such a huge influence on today's society. Although we take it for granted and may not consider it, chemistry has ultimately formed the world around us as we know it to be today. I would like to thank FSU for hosting this symposium and allowing me to present. And I would like to thank all of you for listening to my presentation. And I would also like to thank Dr. Edwards for guiding me through this intriguing journey that has truly transformed the way I think about the world today.